Hey guys, Antrim here, and welcome back to another Minecraft video. And today we're going to be checking out a custom map called Spawn Cube, but I'm not actually going to be doing a survival playthrough of this, but I'm just going to be showing it off here in this video. There's a chance I might live stream this map though, if it winds up being like kind of fair. So my live stream link is in the link in the description below. But anyways, this map is for the latest snapshot of Minecraft, which presently at the end of October 2015 is 15W43C. And basically this is sort of a rehash of of the idea of skyblock except this uses the new loot table system within the 1.9 snapshots in order to make it so that some of the mobs that spawn from the various spawners around the map as you can see here actually spawn their own custom loot which can help you out on the map itself so basically items that you cannot wind up getting otherwise you can probably get from the mob spawning so on this map it's very important to actually create farms and whatnot in order to get everything that you need to get so basically taking the platform that are out there and expanding them so that more things can spawn. So anyways, let me go and let me give you guys a quick rundown of what you start off with on this map. Uh, there isn't really anything underneath any of these islands that you need to know about. So it's not full of sand or anything like that, I do not think. So as you can see, it's just all dirt and then bedrock. And within the chest is the very, very basic. So it's lava, two pieces of ice. So that means you can get yourself an infinite water source right out of the gate. And then you get seeds. So if you want to create food immediately off the bat, then you can go ahead and you can do that. It's just going to take a good long while before you can do it. So anyways, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how the map itself works, and as you wind up progressing throughout the map, you do actually have to create uh, pathways in order to get to these various platforms. Now, obviously, that does involve creating a cobblestone generator to start, but once you wind up uh, choosing whichever platform to go over, the various islands themselves are going to either have their own little rewards or challenges or both. So if you wind up, let's just say, starting by going off to this island over here, then you're going to see a villager who will do various trades. So it's the plant shop and you can trade like a whole bunch of wheat for a carrot and the carrot might wind up being useful for its own reasons and then if you take four carrots and you very tediously grow them then you can get potatoes which are much more efficient and then if you take potatoes you can get melons and melons are efficient in their own ways and then bam you can start getting a whole lot more than that and if you need sand for whatever reason then you can trade a bucket of water for and some dirt for some sand so yeah not really a great deal on your part but it might be a necessity for you as you're playing throughout the map. So the everlasting goal of this map is kind of a stereotypical one, but it is kind of interesting and I'm going to let you guys find this out for yourselves, is to go ahead and kill the end dragon. Now the ender dragon island is not really anything too too special, but you don't need to worry about tunneling your way over to the end island once you are in the end, so you won't like your spawn points in a safe spot. And uh, when you wind up killing the end dragon, there's actually an awesome loot chest or something along the matter underneath the exit portal for the end. So kind of cool. If it's something you guys want to check out and work towards for yourselves, then you can go ahead and you can do that here. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to very quickly show off some of the custom uh, loot mechanics that you can get from some of the various mobs. Now, I wouldn't recommend killing off uh, at least the sheep because I don't know if there's any other spawners. Uh, oh wow, actually, when I was first here, this was a cow spawner. Now it's a chicken spawner. That's rather interesting, actually. What's the spawner over here? This one's just an ocelot spawner. Maybe this one is just changing, like, the as I go back to it. Uh, no, it's still just a chicken spawner, but I do- Oh, look, now it's a- now it's a horse spawner, so it seems like the spawner actually changes over time. That is awesome, just saying. So you don't have to worry about creating a farm with your mobs, mainly just you want to worry about getting a uh, farm for your food and whatnot. But even then, I mean, look at this, this is awesome. This is so pretty cool. So anyways, let's go ahead and let's head off in this direction. It does look like it's raining now. Uh, and let's go ahead and let's remove the torches on this little guy right here so that we can allow these spiders to spawn. Now, I know that these spiders specifically do have an alternate loot table. So if I go ahead and I kill this guy, I, the last one I killed was a regular spider. So let's go and let's see here. But bam, yeah, it drops a whole bunch of stuff. And for whatever reason, coal ore is not textured in this resource pack. But that's what this is. This is coal ore. Then you can get stone, a stone pickaxe, some cobblestone. So some interesting little custom loot here. So let's go ahead and let's kill this guy. Let's see if there's anything special. Yeah, so it looks like you can get some redstone along with all of the other drops and some bread as well. So that's rather interesting. Let's go ahead and let's kill some of these guys over here and see if these guys drop custom loot because as far as I know, they actually don't. So yeah, it's pretty much just use these guys, get your food, and you're good to go. Let's go ahead and let's just knock all of these guys off. I can't imagine why you would need a horse on this map. 
like at all. So yeah, anyways, oh, I should stop spamming. I re I'm so used to 1.8 that spamming is just sort of instinctive for me. But yeah, so all right, so the normal mob spawning has all of just the regular stuff that you would expect. And the ocelots, I don't think, drop anything at all. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the spawn cube map in a nutshell. Now, again, if you guys want to find out what is the prize inside of the end portal uh, area that's over there, then you guys are going to have to check that out. Let's go and let's very quickly, though, see what the spawn is or what these guys drop. So, wow, some pretty interesting stuff. It looks like these guys have the dungeon loot. So, like the, that command that I used that I found on Reddit for my snapshot overview. Yeah, these are regular straight up dungeon loot. So, I guess you could probably get golden apples from these guys. Uh, oh, it looks like these guys also drop uh, skeletons as well. So, if you need that, that's cool. I really love the spawner changing mechanic. I think that is like bar none the coolest, most unique mechanic of this map yet. So, yeah, I really, I want a golden apple, guys. Okay. I just, I want one. No, they're not, they're not going to give me one. But anyways, guys, I hope you all have enjoyed this random little overview of the Spawn Cube map. If you guys want to see me live stream this, let me know in the comment section down below. But anyways, guys, I hope you all have enjoyed. My name is Ant Venom, and I bid you all farewell, guys. Thanks so much for watching.